important uh, thing of you know updating that inner product delta that is uh, something we have to take up that is the most challenging thing what we have obtained so far we obtained that lattice the structure was like this if i write epfn actually you remember there was a subscript p comma n actually but then i dropped the actual ideally that subscript should be there it means that you take data up to nth index based on that do the least square minimization that is orthogonal projection find out the error and that errors last component but since it is still n only here i am dropping that in assuming that we do understand the implication these two signals this one and this one and that is more important here this point is E p b n minus 1, but remember when I write E p b n minus 1, it means not that there is a vector whose nth component is this and n minus 1 one nth component is this, not at all. This means I took data up to nth index, found out with that least square of minimization, that found out optimal combiner coefficients, combined the columns of that matrix involved and then found out the error, that error vector last component. Here it is not the last but one component of that vector. That vector itself is different because I am taking data up to n minus 1 at the index. Then I am doing least square minimization. I get a new defined set of combiner coefficients. By the way, if I combine the columns of the data matrix, I get a new I mean, defined orthogonal projection. Then take the error, last component of that error vector. Okay. Do you understand the difference? It is not that you know, I mean, there is one vector whose nth component is this and n minus 1 component is this. So I am dropping the subscript, but if I really put the subscript here, E p comma n, then bracket n, and E p comma n minus 1, then bracket n minus 1, then it, I mean, uh, clearly indicates that. Just for saving space and all that, I drop the index n, but then you do not get confused. You understand the real meaning of these two, okay? Why not? I told, I gave you, I to, this is, the, keeping this in mind, I made one statement, I think last, in last class, last, last to last class that I will make a sequence this way. This is my sequence E P N B N. I will I am not dropping the subscript for the time being which I did in the previous page. Then E P N minus 1 N minus 1 B E P N minus 2 N minus 2 B. This is my sequence. This is the such a sequence whose N minus 2th element is this n minus 1th element is this, nth element is this, this is my sequence. Good that you are trying to understand, this is, please understand that this is the sequence. Where this value was obtained from what? I took data up to n minus 2th index, found out orthogonal projection error vector, last component of that vector. Here I took data up to n minus 1th index, found out orthogonal projection, huh? those, those two projects are not, not, are not same. Here you get a better set of combiner coefficients. Again find the error n minus 1 component, that is last element of that. This is my sequence. If this is the sequence, obviously this is the value of that sequence, this is the element of the sequence at the current index, this was at the previous index. So, if I take the sequence and then delay it, definitely this will be delayed and you will get this, because this is my sequence, mind you. You understand this? Huh? This is my sequence. And obviously, because from here by the computation, now how do I assure? You can still ask me that how do you ensure that that is the sequence generated? Fine, I will by this lattice computation, I will generate here E p b, sorry, E p plus 1 b n. 
and that is based on what dot up to any, any, any the index. So, E p b n minus 1 by taking dot up to n minus 1 at the index, then E p b, E p sorry let me complete it then So, you see this guy and look at this guy, this will be used again in the previous uh, next stage, is not it? But here what I have done like here data up to nth index was considered here also data up to nth index, that will be delayed. Okay. That is if I s start with E p b and that is okay, suppose you give b this thing okay the, I use data up to nth index found out the error vector to the last component. Then by the computation I am generating the same thing just for p plus 1th order, but the same thing. Okay, so, if I, I am delaying it here by my previous claim I am getting that one step delayed element of that sequence. Here also I will get the same. Hmm. Important thing is this coefficients, coefficients are delta p n by sigma p n minus 1 square right b square is not it this one this is how to remember if I mean what is forward prediction error then the previous order forward prediction minus this side and the inner product is common delta is common but norm square will be from this this guy from this guy okay and here it is Okay, these two coefficients dot 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 and in the first stage you remember I did the first stage separately first stage because I told that suppose I am I mean, when I derived the lattice I told that okay, I will consider at least p equal to 1 and then go for p equal to 2 p equal to 3, but what happens to p equal to 0 and all that you know that I did separately you remember this I did. And then the based on that only I define what is E 0 n f, what is E 0 n b. This is your x n. like this okay so here you get the sequence e1 n f sorry you can put this way here you get e1 b in minus 1 like that did you stay now you see so let is recursion is i'm not writing the equation for this separately e p plus 1 f n is this minus this times this and so on and so forth so once you know the parameters at any index, all the coefficients are time dependent, unlike that lattice. Here, all the coefficients are time dependent, and at each index n, when you find out the coefficients, then you use them to filter. X n, this E p f n, all these are only signals, these are not parameters. Once you know the multipliers and all, at that index of time, whatever signals you just go on filtering them, you get these various signals. Okay. And uh, how the parameters are uh, treated? Parameters are treated like this at the 0 stage. Sigma 0 n f square and sigma 0 n b square both are same and that was lambda times plus current 1, is not it? So, using so at the moment nth index time, the current index comes and new data has come, you find out this new norm square. 
delta is a problem, but suppose by some hook or crook we know all the, all the deltas for the timing suppose, so deltas are suppose known to us at each index or somehow, then we only need to know this sigma 0 n square and this is sigma 0 b, but n minus 1 square, so this is, uh, this was obtained in the previous stage and stored, okay, and the current one we stored for the usage at n plus 1 at the index, current one for this, okay, so using that you find out these ones. Then we have, then how to obtain the uh, sigmas for the subsequent stages? See, it becomes adaptive because of, because data comes in, so data determines the two norm squares, two sigmas here. And from these sigma squares, in general recursively I obtain the sigma squares for the subsequent stages by the, those recursive equations, sigma, this we obtain, isn't it? And please correct me if I am making this one be sigma p b n minus one. Na? So mind you, this is how it is adaptive because data comes, data changes the norm square at this and then those norm square are used order recursively at the same index to find out the norm square, these variances for the subsequent stages. Using them, new co the coefficients are changed. Using those values, the pre corresponding prediction errors are computed. In fact, those prediction errors will be used to update deltas that we will see. Deltas will be updated, it is not possible to order update delta. The mathematics does not allow actually, it is not possible. So what we will be doing, you know, at, for every stage we will be time updating delta, that is from the previous value of delta, we need some storage then, we need to store the previous index value of delta, that will be used to time update, that is to get the current delta p n from delta p n minus 1, but that will be also using the two errors available, to forward the, the forward prediction and backward prediction errors available, those all also will be used. So that how the adaptation will go on, that at the 0 stage, so, you consider 0 stage, xn comes, so the two variances change, okay, and deltas will be what? They will be time updated from the previous value plus the two prediction errors. And then by order recursion, you go to the next stage, you get the new variances and there you uh, time update the corresponding delta, but that will be using previous value of delta plus these two prediction errors, which are computed at this stage so on and so forth. So it is adaptive you understand, but adaptive means exact computation and as more and more time passes, basically this will become better and better estimate of the actual optimal forward and backward prediction errors, because underlying mechanism is that least square minimization, more and more time passes means more and more data comes and you know the underlying mathematics, no? that it will be better and better estimation, okay, but it is purely adaptive, no approximation anywhere. You understood that adaptation phenomenon, isn't it? Because at each index n, I am adapting the coefficients. Variances are ad updated order recursively and using the two prediction errors available with us and the past value of the delta for that particular stage by some formula, we will be calculating current value of delta, okay. So now our main task remains as to how to compute the current value of I mean, how to time update delta, let us spend some time on that. So, to do that, we set aside the lattice thing, we come to some general real now. I was just discussing yesterday, but there was time was short, so I could not explain properly. So, let us go to some definitions. Suppose you have got some vectors, u1 n dot dot say u l n, l number of vectors, you form a matrix u n. Any vector here, u k n is of this kind, u k 0th index, u k 1th index dot dot u k current index, normal, w n column space, okay, there is a space spanned by these columns, space spanned by the columns of this matrix this column vector, there is a column, I, I call it loosely column space and there is W n, P n, P n perpendicular, you understand? 
they are orthogonal projection and projection error operator of for wn this space wn fine dn is an external vector okay here i want to find out this estimate this projection it could be either pn dn or pn perpendicular dn because when you have pn dn pn perpendicular dn is no problem you subtract from dn so maybe i write directly this i want to relate somehow to mind you the two lengths are different because when i say p n minus 1 perpendicular means i have got columns like u1 n minus 1 u2 n minus 1 ul n minus 1 the last row of this matrix is absent okay dn vector also not the last element is absent is only dn minus 1 vector there i do a projection and here i get a projection of course its length is one higher than here but even where they are uh, the first n minus 1 entries are not same in the do because these are two projections are different you get different of combined coefficients because here dn and these columns they have got one extra data present isn't it <coughs> but i want to somehow relate this with this you understand this is a time recursion n minus 1 is 20 but it's not easy it's not direct anyway no way it is direct it's not easy to understand this suppose i consider this situation and you remember pi n vector in case you have forgotten 0 0 0 last component is 1 now suppose i have got a situation like this i just only one one vector e1 n suppose i have got only one vector to just for an il illustration purpose e1 has only one column vector i will generalize it to this case but suppose i have got only one column vector which is e1 n and this guy as opposed to u1 n minus 1 and then 0 okay there is u1 n minus 1 vector and they just have one 0 here you understand that pi n is orthogonal to this because pi n has 1 in the last component this guy has 0 and this has all zeros here this has data you take the inner product even if you have lambda factor and all it will be 0 you understand isn't it 1 into 0 and this data into 0 so they are orthogonal so your pi goes this way pi n okay mind you right now i am taking only this case where u n is this so here p n means and p n perfect they are all related to what the projection and position error operator correspond to the space span by only one guy okay you understand i will be using that notation p n p n perpendicular here but here the space is spanned by only one fellow just for this example it will give you some clarity through this graphical treatment then i will generalize to, i mean come to the generalized case fine these two are orthogonal now suppose i consider but they are all length n. I consider another vector that is your u1 n. It is a two dimensional plane, but does not from that you do not come to the conclusion that since in this figure it appears that this is lying in the plane containing pi n and these two and they are orthogonal, this is always expressible as a linear commissioner too, because this is actually n dimensional space. These two can be pointing in two different directions, and this fellow could be pointing in another direction. I mean this fellow may not be in the plane containing this guy and this guy in general not here but in general so do not get uh, deceived by this uh, fact you know that I am drawing on a 2D plane so definitely this is appears to be in the same plane which contains this guy and this guy plane means space okay in general not three vectors pointing in three different directions so one is not in the plane containing the other two or space containing the other two okay in general but here it will not be. I explained that yesterday. My claim is if you consider u1n and pi n, these two fellow, or to start with, if you consider pi n and this guy, and the space span by 
these two guys or, or using real life geometry the plane containing these two guys. In vector space we call it space plane by these two, in real life solid geometry we call it the plane containing these two. Both will be same thing you can always see, in that plane any vector will be a linear combination of these two vectors. Okay. My claim is that contains this guy, first claim. That is very simple, what is U1N? U1N means this, this, com this part is common, last part this guy gives me 0, but this guy gives me 1, so I will take the last component of this vector u1n, the scalar element u1n, multiply that by multiply pi n by that, so 1 into u1n, that plus this guy together will give me this vector. So, this is linear, this is a linear combination of these two, obviously this is contained in the plane containing these two or this is contained in the space plane by these two, okay. That means, if I consider these two lines, if I consider these two and consider the space spanned by these two fellows, that is a subset or that must be contained in the space spanned by these two fellows, because this fellow is always some linear combination of these two guys. So, space spanned by these two means what? Space containing linear combinations of these two guys. Any linear combination of these two guys, think you replace this by a combination of these two. So, obviously that will be what? Finally, a linear combination of this fellow and this fellow, is it? So, space span by pi n and u 1 n that is contained in the space span by pi n and this guy, okay. And reverse also is true. If you now consider this fellow, this is also a linear combination of these two guys because u 1 n pi n, this I multiply by minus of the last component of this guy. So, minus of last component of this guy will multiply 1. Now, if you add the 2, last one will cancel out, you get 0 and ok, is not it? If you consider pi n, multiply it by the minus of the last component of this vector. So, that will multiply the 1 here and then you add the 2. So, last component and minus of that they will cancel yield a 0 here, top 1 will be like this because this is 0, so will not change anything. So, by the same logic then, space contained, space spanned by these two fellows is contained in the space spanned by these two fellows. That means, if A is contained in B and B is contained in, then A and B are same. So, space spanned by pi n and u on n and space spanned by pi n and this fellow, they are same. But here, these two are orthogonal. So, if I have any third party vector, say d n, I have to project it orthogonally on the space on the space, because there is only one space here now, either they are same as it, on that space, then that will be what? If I view the space as the one spanned by pi n fellow and this fellow, which are orthogonal, then that projection is very easy to compute. That will be what? Projection along this component and projection along this component. Projection along this component will be what? Last guy, d n inner product with pi n divided by norm square of pi n into pi n, is not it? d n in inner product with pi n will give us to what? Last, okay. And then norm square of pi n is 1, pi n norm square is 1, lambdas will affect here, this will is free of lambda, norm square is 1, okay. So, last component by 1 into pi n, so that last component multiplied by the 1. So, that means, can I write this way, p n you are understanding one thing, now I am not making use of, of any you know physical geometry here, I am still using vector space logic only. My logic, I am giving a pictorial description, but my logic is purely using, using the axioms of vector space. So, if you, even here if I do not draw this figure, I can write directly, because I said by linear combination I approach that the one space is contained in the other and vice versa. I did not use any real life geometry for analogy and all that, okay. So, my treatment is still purely based on vector space. So, with this figure only was used to have some clarity, that is all, visual clarity you can say. Okay. So, P n, not P n. So, first I write span of, if I call it W pi n span of, in this case, u 1 n and pi n vector, then this is equivalent to span of 
these two fellows that we have proved just now. This is what we proved here, isn't it? At this space I am calling W pi comma n. This space is W pi comma n. This space is W pi comma n. The corresponding projects the total the, uh, here I consider only W n mind you. I have here I have appended another guy pi n. There is the only difference between the two. Here it was purely use. Now pi n has come in. Let us say I am calling it W pi comma n. It was only purely W n. Okay. And here the corresponding projection operators are p pi n, p pi n perpendicular. Fine. You understand their meaning. Can you see I can easily write if I take the third guy, third party external vector dn, project it on this space. I use this thing because pi n and these are orthogonal. That will be what? Projection on this and projection on this. Projection on pi n will be what? D n inner product with pi n by norm square of pi n into pi n. Norm square of pi n is 1. Norm square is 1. Others are 0, this 1, 1 square 1, no lambda on that. 1. So, forget about the denominator. D n vector inner product with pi n will be the last component of D n into pi n. So, d n into that last component into 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, essentially a vector where all are zeros, last one is the last component of d n, that is d n. So, one vector will be zeros and then d n. There is a projection on pi n, okay. And projection on this will be what? d n inner product with Instead of taking the inner product, let us come, uh, let us not use that formula here because you know I will be generalizing the case where not only u1 is present, so many are present. So, there the inner product thing will not work. Inner product works only when there is one vector on which I am projecting. So, I can say inner product between the two by non square of that. You are projecting dn on this vector. So, essentially, you will be finding out a linear combiner coefficient only one in this case. That times this vector subtracted from d n error vector norm square of that error will be minimized. But that norm square will be what last component of d n okay. last component of d n is not 0. I am doing it here, but I wanted to do it in the general case. If you permit me, if you permit me, because I am just not able to take the temptation of going to this general case where, I mean, you know, we have all the vectors present. Huh. Because just, you know, it is it's, it's very silly to just deal with, that becomes very simple case actually. So, up to this, I use this thing that okay, in this figure we have found out that the two spaces are same w pi n, you can see it this way, this way and any external vector can be projected using this treatment where it is simply a summation of these two projections. This we did for this case, now I will generalize where it is not only one vector, I will generalize this statement where all the vectors are present, I will just write down these equations and then I redo this projection for the general case whose special case will be this, where only one column vector is present, because that is more, uh, that is better actually, you know. Okay. So, now, what is saying this figure, I will be now generalizing. Here, I had only E1 fellow. I will be considering <coughs> this vector. u pi n as u 1 n, u 2 n dot 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 dot, u l n as before and pi n appended. You understand this is what I did, but only one vector was present. I am just giving a name and the corresponding space span by w pi n call space of 
u pi n okay and the projection operators so you understand i am not doing anything new but i am just taking so many vectors at a time i mean i wanted to do the entire thing by one go that not do the some the, this treatment for one vector I again redo the same thing when the general case comes that is the reason why i you know i chose to come to the general case directly p pi n perpendicular you know these two operators so i'm not i don't have to write their meanings p pi comma n is the projection orthogonal projection operator for this space p pi n or perpendicular is the corresponding error operator you understand this right and i define the vector say u pi prime n minus 1 as what you know u 1 by n minus 1 0 u 2 n minus 1 0 dot 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 u l n minus 1 0 and pi n. So, you understand I am not doing anything new earlier I did the same with only one vector earlier only this u 2 to u l were not present I consider u 1 n appended with pi n this and this fellow this and he said the space span by the two vectors here and here they are same that is what I did that time I am not little, little more general. Is this essentially you know? earlier u2 to ul were not present? I consider u1 n and pi n, and other case I consider u1 n minus 1 0 and pi n. That is what I did in this figure. Once this two, once these two. Now instead of only one vector, I am considering all of them. So here all of them having this 0 fellow. Okay. One second by the same logic you can you can see the space span by this column, column space you can see column space of is same as the same w pi n. I proved it here for the simple case where there are two vector or only one u1, same logic can be used here. Firstly you consider this. And consider this. First, I show that column space of this column in this matrix is contained in the column space of this matrix, and then I show the reverse. Column space of this matrix, first consider pi n, pi n present here, present here. Column space of this matrix means for the space where any vector is typically a linear combination of these fellows. Pi n present, present, and any other vector if you pick up say u k n that is obtainable as what a linear combination of pi n and the vector here with u k n minus 1 and 0 by that logic by that logic na suppose say you consider this same thing u 1 n minus 1 0 it is very simple u 1 n minus 1 0 this vector pi n you can combine the two to get u 1 n I, I have done it already multiply this pi n fellow with the last component of u 1 n and add that with this you get back that same for all the columns and pi n also is present. So, any linear combination of this fellow is a linear is ultimately a linear combination of this fellow. So, that means column space here is contained here contained in the column space here and vice versa also column space of this matrix is contained in the column space of this matrix because pi n pi n present and any vector here will be say you take u 1 n minus 1 and 0 that is a linear combination of u 1 n and pi n just take the negative of the last component multiply pi n by that add the two last component with cancel out give a 0 very simple just repeat go on repeating that logic on uh, all of them okay so that means the two color spaces are same so i am doing that now you see in general case that dn is an external guy i want to find out orthogonal projection of dn on this space. This space can be viewed as the column space of this matrix or this, but here advantage is pi n is orthogonal to each of these fellows. They are not mutually orthogonal. See that is little difference. They are, these fellows are not mutually orthogonal. That is the reason I wanted to be general. That when many vectors are present, they are not mutually orthogonal. That fact was not coming up there because I just chose one fellow. 
So that is why the, I wanted to switch over to this general case. Sir, sir, yeah, pi n is orthogonal to them. So that means overall projection is what? Projection on the space spanned by this side plus the projection on pi n. Isn't it? So p pi n d n is what projection on pi n that we have already seen what it is in the previous page. That is irrespective of whether you have one column vector or many. Projection of d n on pi n we have already seen inner product with pi n divided by norm square of pi n into pi n that was giving rise to 0 0 0 and the last component. We have seen that. Please do not ask me to repeat this. This you have seen d n on pi n we all know what it is. Now comes this bigger issue where I stopped and came to the general case. A d n to be orthogonally projected on the space spanned by this part. This matrix, this part you can even call a matrix u prime n minus 1, phi dropped from here, u prime n minus 1 means all those vectors are there with a 0 appended. So that means now I have to project d n orthogonally on the column space of this matrix. This, this pi n I have taken care of here, I have to project d n on the space spanned by this col these columns, that is the column space of this matrix. Please see this carefully now. Let us go to the first principle of doing orthogonal projection. What do, how do we do? We find out a set of linear combiner coefficients by which we combine the columns, then take an error, take the difference of that combined thing from the d n fellow and take norm square of that, minimize that with respect to the coefficients, right. If you do that, just for rough work I am using this part, if you do that, you are supposed linearly combined in these columns. Hmm. You are linearly combining these columns. So, on one hand you have got d n fellow and other hand you have got these columns c 1 into u 1 n minus 1 0 plus say c 2 into u 2 n minus 1 0 plus dot 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 plus say c what c l into u l n minus 1 0, is not it? And d n you take the error d n minus this a combined thing and that error vector norm square is to be minimized which is to be c 1 to c l. That is what we do. Once you obtain that optimal set, combine them, this is your projection, subtract, this is the error. That is a simple thing. Now, in that we find the error vector, last component will be what? Only the thing coming from here. Here all have zeros. So, the error, if you now take this, find the error and call it say E n okay. norm square of E n will be what? First take the last guy, last guy square up, no lambda there. You remember norm square the last guy is 1, previous to that lambda, previous to that lambda square. So, last guy is d square n. Now, I will write compactly using your intelligence. Course, just imagine the last but one component. C 1 times last component of E 1 n minus 1, E 2 C 2 times last component of E 2 n minus 1 dot 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 here. Subtract that from D n minus 1, that error square multiplied by lambda. Previous one also multiplied by lambda square, you take lambda common. Then what you get? This is not it simply this? So, lambda you have not, you have missed out some classes it looks like. Sir? You have missed out classes or you have not been following. Sir, what was the definition of inner product I gave? Norm square is a special case of inner product. I gave the inner product with a lambda or not, forgetting factor so that contribution for remote past is forgotten. I am using that definition of uh, general definition of inner product. You are, you are also confused about lambda, is it? Recheck your notes. So, this is, please see, d n minus 1 minus summation c i 
u i n minus i i equal to 1 to l this you are minimizing this is the <laughs> thing you have to see always inside you know you are taking the error last guy the square up it is independent of because of the presence of zero last guy does not have any impact on the coefficients optimal coefficients you obtain that is what is the, is the crux of the story the new data has come but that will not change in this case the optimal combiner coefficients because this is only square separate term. This is, when you minimize it with respect to C1, Cl up to Cl, this will be giving rise to nothing, 0. But what you obtain from here is what? You consider the remaining terms. You consider the remaining error terms. See, I am not writing like, you know, teaching in a school. I am not writing. You please see it yourself. The last but one term is dn minus 1. Last is dn. Last but one is dn minus 1. That time C1 times E1 in, in minus 1, C2 times U2 in minus 2, C, Cl times Un minus L combination that is are square multiplied by lambda, lambda I am taking common. So, that 1. Then again, d n minus 2 minus c 1 times e 1 n minus 2, c 2 times u 2 n minus 2, c l times e u l n minus 2, that is are square multiplied by 1 lambda, because 1 lambda has taken common. So, on and so forth. n minus 1, thank you, thank you very much indeed, yeah, thank you, indeed. you should correct me, I am writing in a flow, thank you indeed, yes, u i n minus 1, hmm. n minus 1, yeah, okay, so that means what you are doing, what uh, when you are minimizing this, you are basically minimizing this, in fact minimizing this part, you will forget that lambda, but why, when do you minimize it, when you project ortho, uh, d n minus 1 vector orthogonally on the space span by u 1 n minus 1 alone, u 2 n minus 1 and u l n minus 1, no 0 present. What is that projection? That is the projection p subscript n minus 1 d n, is not it? That is you get those com combiner coefficients, you get those c i's which gives rise to which gave you this component, this thing p n minus 1, d n minus 1. When you computed p n minus 1, d n minus 1, you get a set of coefficients by which you linearly combine u n n minus 1 to u l n minus 1, those coefficients will be co co come up from here. So, if I now use those coefficients and combine them, last component will be 0 and above that will be this fellow only, because these vectors are combined by the same set of coefficients. Okay. Now, those who are coming regularly will understand, those who are not who are dropping in between, they will find it difficult. Is understand? You are getting the same set of first attack the co coefficients, you are getting the same set of combiner coefficients, because minimization coming from here. It is like minimizing the norm square of what? d n minus 1 vector and a linear combination of e 1 n minus 1 to l 1 minus 1. That difference. That is what you do when you project d n minus 1 orthogonal on the space spanned by e 1 n minus 1 to e l n minus 1, right. Hmm. So, those combiner coefficients you get, now using them you are combining them. Last one will give rise to 0 with all zeros. but uh, top one when you combine you get this. So, overall thing will be what? When you are projecting d n on the column space of this matrix, first part will be, first part will be p n minus 1, d n minus 1, last part will be 0. This combine this zeros will give us to 0, combine this upper part, this will be this. That means, instead of projection, I take the projection error. If I take the projection error, then from I mean I have to subtract this right hand side from d n. If you subtract right hand side from d n, this last guy goes, last guy goes and on top we have d n minus 1, that minus this, that will be the corresponding error.
when you subtract here yeah, Joseph, when you subtract this right hand side now from d n because now we are finding on the error. The last component of d n is this d n, here also d n plus 0 d n, so subtract it 0. The other comp of top half is d n minus 1 vector, that minus this projection, this projection, so it will give us the corresponding error. So, you see I am somehow able to relate this projection for the time index n minus 1 to a projection corresponding to time index n, but it is not simply p n perpendicular d n, I have to ball, I have to very carry the burden of this extra guy pi, whereas my in intention was to have relation directly between the two, but that this kind of relation does not exist that p n perpendicular d n is simply this, that does not exist, this is what I could do, but then how does it solve my purpose. From here, I will proceed in an, another way. This is what? This again projection, this corresponds to what? Projection on the space span by this also. You can either view it as the projections on the space span by these fellows, but the two spaces are same. So, this projection, forget about the error, consider the projection. That is again projection on the space span by these fellows. This I can write as a direct some decomposition of what? This component, this side plus pi n projected ortho. If first take pi n projected orthogonally on the space span by this, take the error span of that. So, at least I am able to extract out this part separately because I finally want a p n perpendicular d n, no pi appended. So, pi I want to take out, but I cannot throw away pi, then everything will be incorrect. Okay. So, what I will be doing here, this projection again. W pi n now you write as, you write W pi n as W n, sorry W n, there is a space span by these guys, direction of what, span, I mean span of what, P n perpendicular pi n, pi n projected on the space span by these fellows, that is p n pi n and the corresponding error p n pi n pi n. So, in this case again the same projection can be written as what and then alternative by equivalent way this projection here I wrote like this same projection can be written in an equivalent way here as projection of d n on w n plus projection of d n on this guy is not it. That means, this can be written as p n d n okay, p n d n plus, so at least you see p n d n is coming and p n minus 1 d n minus 1 they are coming, extra terms are coming I agree, this I cannot leave away, but at least there is some relation from n minus 1 th index to n th index, is not it. So, p n d n plus d n on this guy. I will write the inner product later. Hmm? Inner product. In the inner product, simply d n with this, d n with this, but I can swap this projection operator from pi n to on d n. I am not right showing that step separately, there is a sort of just space, you please understand. So, this can be written like this pi n. When you multi, when you do inner product between pi n and any other vector, you, you basically get the last component. So, this inner product will give rise to what? The projection error, if you take d n, d n projected on this guy and the error, the last component of that error, is not it? And this was only p pi n d n, so I do the formality for the corresponding error, that is this guy, p pi n perpendicular d n was 1 from 1 approach was this, 
and from this approach equal to what? You subtract the right hand side from d n. So, this becomes p n perpendicular d n and this is minus sign only. You can write the top as the vector p n perpendicular d n this vector last component in its component of that vector divided by Okay. This is the relation we will be using frequently, this one. Now, you can understand there is a direct relation between p n perpendicular d n and p n minus 1 perpendicular d n minus 1, but I have this additional burden. Even here also p n perpendicular d n is coming, this guy is last component scalar, but I have this additional components. If you will see this will not create problem, when I apply it in the lattice case, this will not create problem because I will be able to swap this p n perpendicular from pi n to somebody else that somebody else's last component will turn up. I will have problem with this guy, this guy will cause give rise to a new variable again. Like various variances we have taken, I have order updated, this will be another variable I have to live with, that means I have to update it, that can be order updated. Okay, so, this is an extra variable that is generated. P I mean, here I have taken L th term, so in the, uh, our case we will say we will have for every order say p vectors, so it will basically depend on order p and this actually is basically an angle parameter, we will I'll show it that angle parameter now and that can be order updated. So, that means lattice will not only involve forward and backward pressure errors or the respective error variances or delta, in the delta business, delta is nowhere inside, do not get confused, delta is inner product between two projection error vectors, delta have not come to, I am only updating, time of projection error vector only, no inner product, but just hear me out, in the delta update, I will be needing this addition another variable, which will come from there and this variable then again needs to be updated, data dependent, this can be, we will see, this can be easily order updated. I will give you the meaning of this and then we will call up for day. P n perpendicular pi n square. If you take this to be the space w pi n or not w pi n, just w n, w n, the space spanned by these guys, w n. Suppose this is w n and here is your pi n, sorry, here is your pi n. So, this is your projection p n pi n and this is p n perpendicular pi n. Hmm. Hmm. Now, you can, you, even without using any geometry, you all know that square of this plus square of this equal to this. That means, if I take the ratio of norm square of this guy by norm square of this guy, that will be less than 1. is not it, less than 1 greater than equal to 0, less than 1. So, that will, that can always be, forget about the geometry, this a quantity like p n perpendicular pi n, p n perpendicular pi n norm square of that divided by norm square of pi n, that is can always be written as some kind of sin square theta, this is norm square I am saying actually if the norm, instead of square if you take the norm, norm of this guy p n particular pi n divided by norm of pi n, that can always be written as some kind of sin theta, is not it, but norm of pi n is equal to what 1, this guy's norm is 1, last component is 1 others are zeros. So, that means norm square of this guy can always be equated with some kind of sin square theta, in this geometry, in this I mean geometry this, where I am drawing the analogy, you can take that uh, this to be that angle. That is why this quantity is called the angle parameter, which needs to be updated. Hmm. I still took the general case of u 1 l, u 1 n up to u l n. I have not used this in the specific case of lattice, 
I gave you so far the general result, but my starting point was updating delta p n. These results can be very quickly and very nicely used now in updating delta p n. I suggest that when you come for the next class, please come prepared with this. Please, I will not rewrite these relations. I just cannot because I am running short of time. I will not. Every class I say this, but I do recap. This cannot be done. I simply, please on Monday you come with this. I will wind up this topic in 10, 15 minutes time which I could not do today and then I want to move to another topic, another uh, another version of RLS filters which is also very good which leads to a systolic array actually. Hmm? Okay, that is all for today. Thank you very much.